So good morning, ladies. Welcome. It's Wednesday, Mindset Wednesday. And today we're going to chat about what to do with haters because it's a real thing now in social. So we're going to start out by talking about obviously ourselves when we feel hate towards other people because it's a thing and that's okay. And then what, what we do and what it's like when we get hate from others. So let's talk when you feel hate towards others. Okay. So I'm going to give you three steps. The first step is to breathe and recognizing you're having hate and judgment towards other people. The second step, I want you to ask yourself, what does my inner truth and my highest self and my inner being feel about this person? And if your answer inside your head is anything than anything other than love, you know your fear and insecurities are talking. Because I know at the core of who you are, you are a lover, you want people to be well, do well, and you don't really care what they're doing because it's their journey. And so that's a really great question to assess kind of where am I at? Am I allowing my emotions to take over? And am I stepping into my highest self every day? The third step and third question I want you to ask yourself is while taking a deep breath, what can I learn from this experience? What is this experience here to show me? Your hate, fear, and insecurities are not about the other person. So a really great exercise is using a mirror technique. And this may feel a little bit uncomfortable if you haven't done this before. But I want you to ask yourself, what do I really hate about this person right now? What do I not like? And then I want you to use that as a mirror and go, okay, do I not like that about myself? Am I being that in my life right now? And how can I live that even more in my life? So if you're getting frustrated about someone's authenticity or their connection to themselves or their message, just remember this is about you because when you're living in complete peace and inner peace, like I said earlier, you do not care what other people do. You let them do their thing because it has no impact on you. And I think this is such a good place to start because when you can recognize when you are having hate towards others, we can better understand when people are having hate towards you. So I want to give you a couple of analogies and a little exercise to do today. So the first exercise is to realize when you're having hate towards another person, realizing that it is not your truth, connect to what your truth is, and then ask yourself, what can I learn? And what is this person showing me? How is this person a mirror to what is unhealed within me? The second exercise I want you to do, and you can easily do this throughout your day, is think about how often and observe how often you're having opinions and judgments of others and other experiences. It's like a nerve. So you know a picture in, I was a bio major, <laughs> and you know a nerve, the like image of a nerve, you have the center core, right? And then you have the nerve endings that all go out. So it's almost as if something happens, a person or an experience happens within us that triggers us, recognizing that everybody's triggers are different. So your hate towards another person may not be the same hate as somebody else. And recognizing that it's your trigger, your experiences, your conditioning that is causing you to have a reaction. So I really want you to pay attention to your reaction. And throughout your day, see how often you have an opinion about everything. Oh, I, I like this mug. I don't like this mug. I like this tea. I don't like this tea. I like this person. I don't like this person. We're always having an opinion and a judgment. So it's like that nerve where it hits, we're triggered, and then our stories just start firing. We have all of these stories, all of these expectations, all of these thoughts about that one situation. So what's so beautiful about the act of presence 
is slowing down that thought process, retraining those nerves, rewiring your brain to just slow down and stop having so many opinions and judgments of other people and situations like the nerve. So we want to practice to just have the nerve, right? You drink this tea and you're thinking, huh, it tastes sweet or it tastes bold or it tastes whatever, a little bitter, but we don't necessarily always have to be attaching these opinions and judgments to our experiences. So just play around with that today and see how that feels. Another tip and exercise I want you to notice is when you go on social media and you're finding you have hate or judgments towards others, you can unfollow or mute them. It's really easy. We want to minimize the triggers within your being. My entire goal always is inner peace. And at, in an ideal state, we're in complete peace that it doesn't bother us what other people do. However, that's our ideal state and that's always not the case. So we want to make sure that we're taking away the, the temptations to judge and the conditioning to judge other people. So you can take that away and just say to yourself, that's okay, I'm just gonna let you go. You can even send them love as you mute or unfollow and just say, I'm just choosing me right now and I love you on your journey, I'm letting you be and we're just not resonating on the same you know, energy right now. And maybe one day we will, but right now we're not. And that's something so important as well is to give you the space to allow you to change your mind. It's so easy for us to say, I like this person, I don't like this person. In this moment, our energy may not connect and that's okay. But maybe tomorrow, maybe in a week, maybe in a year, five years from now, things will change as our growth and development continues to evolve and change. And that's okay. Send them love in the process, okay? So that's if you're feeling any sort of hate or judgment towards others. Now, if other people are giving you hate and judgment, this is super real and can be really painful, really hurtful and prevent people from sharing the message and doing the thing that they wanna do. And I want you to remember, if you are, well, I'm gonna get, when it comes to haters, I like to use this little quote that, <laughs> that I say, those that care don't matter. And those that don't care are the ones that matter because those that care as in telling you they hate you, telling you, you know, constructive criticism, they don't really matter because they're projecting their own fears and insecurities on you. Just as your hate was about you, other people's hate is totally about them. And it is not worth you reacting and you disturbing your inner peace because of how someone else is treating you from their projection. So my goal, if ever I get hate, is to drop into a place of inner peace within me, pay attention to my reaction because my reaction is also a trigger. So I ask, how can I learn from this? What is this here to show me? What is my trigger? What am I feeling right now? And I really try to let that person go, send them love. Sometimes even in a meditation, I do a release meditation and recognize that this is their fear. This is their insecurities projecting themselves, projecting itself onto me. And I know it's hard. I know it can be really painful. And if you are putting yourself out there on social media for you know, work or personal, it's going to happen. The more followers you get, the more, the larger your community gets, you're going to get haters. And again, it's just their projection. So I need you to really ask yourself this question. Am I caring too much about what other people think? Am I comparing myself to others? When I compare myself to others, I am not appreciating the uniqueness and gifts that I have. 
because I'm trying to follow and be someone else. So how can I use this to connect deeper to the truth of who I am, to connect to the truth of what I'm supposed to share and to connect to the truth of who I'm supposed to be? Because it doesn't matter if there's a million massage therapists and or stretch therapists or coaches or speakers or whatever it is that you truly want to be. Because how you're going to deliver your message is different from everyone else. So when you find yourself comparing, remind yourself, this is taking away from the uniqueness that I am. How can I use this as a lesson to tune in deeper, create more confidence in who I am and how I am differentiated from everybody else? How can I love myself more? And how can I accept myself more instead of dropping to a comparison or a judgment scenario of myself or others? Does that make sense? You ladies still there? So with the hate that we're being brought onto others, always remember that it is them, not you. And I want you to ask yourself a couple more questions if you knew that you couldn't fail and that you weren't going to get any haters, what would you do today? If you knew people were going to love you, what would you do? And if you would do anything different than you're doing right now, you are letting fear and other people hold you back. And I'm speaking to the woman right now who has a message to say, who knows she wants to do things, put out videos, join TikTok, start an Instagram, um, you know, post pictures about her thoughts and opinions, share her work, share her artwork, and who isn't doing it because you are too scared of what other people think. And let me tell you, not everyone is going to love you. One of my mentors says and asks me, so I'm going to ask this question to you. What are you taking a stand for? What do you stand for? Don't be afraid to take the stand. Because there's going to be people that hate you. There's going to be people that love you. And it's almost better to have people that love you or hate you than just like indifferent and in the middle. If you have an opinion, there are people that are going to hate you and people that are going to love you. And it's not personal. It's their shit, not yours. Just like when you have hate and judgment, it's your shit, not theirs. Because they're just trying their best also. I have some comments coming in. Yes, this is some thoughts that some ladies have been having. And I see you right now, Alyssa, Stephanie, Erica. If you are this woman who is not putting yourself out there, my message to you is connect deeper with yourself. Connect deeper with who you are so that you can share your message. Take away, it's like blinders. You got to put the blinders on. Take away all of the comparison, all of the, even on Instagram and social, it's so easy to see what other people are doing in your industry. I actually have someone that helps me to comment and, and follow people in my industry because I know I can't do it because I don't want to fall into the comparison game of, oh, look what this person is doing. Oh, that's so great. I wonder if I should do it. Don't do it to yourself. Either unfollow or mute people within your industry so you stop comparing. It's different to do research. I really, I, I really encourage you to do research to see what are other people doing? What is their revenue, their business structure? What does that look like? Is there anything that I can learn from people within my industry? Once you've done your research, you got to tune in. You have to know what is right for you because when you start following other people and if you were in my summit, the online summit, Anjit, who he, his story just quickly, he was raised in Jaipur, India. He was, he became a co-founder of Mind Valley. And he talked about this because when you're following somebody else, they become your ceiling and you can't go any higher. So you can learn from other people, but you need to create your own path so that nobody else is creating a ceiling for you. I also want to add one more part to that in you creating your message and you going out there. There is such an element of surrender in you 
bringing forth your message and you being and doing you. So if you're a follower of like law of attraction and manifestation, I think it can get quite hairy. (laughs) And I say that because I, yes, when I work with clients, I always ask them, what do you want your ideal life to look like? What do you want your career to look like? Your personal life, your love life. It's important to know. And even the other day when we did the wheel of life, it's important to know your 10. It's important to know what you want that to look like. But then you got to surrender because what you see for yourself, the same as in your message and your business and being of influence and creating community, you see based on what you have seen. So you see, you see for yourself based on your experiences, your experiences, your environment and what you see in others. So I want you to add that surrender element so that you know how you want to feel and don't care how it happens. You allow this openness and this evolution for you to become and do something greater than you can even imagine right now. And sometimes your dreams and you trying to manifest and attract things will actually limit you as a ceiling because there's so much more above and beyond what you even think you are capable of. And so leaning into that surrender and not caring how things happen, having zero expectations and just connecting to the feeling. So if you have dreams and desires and goals to be of influence, create influence, create impact, share your message to others, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to breathe and I want you to picture how it feels. Picture helping Picture being of service. It is not about you. The more people you are able to help, the better. So how can you not make it about you? Connect to the feeling of loving and helping others. Connect to the truth of who you are. A loving being. And this just keeps coming up this week. You are a lover and you love because you are a lover. You don't love because other people and experiences are necessarily lovable. So that's why on Mindset Wednesday, I wanted to bring in this element because I believe how can we take these self-development principles and apply them to life? And this is how we do that. We take real life situations like having hate for others and other people having hate on you and you wanting to share your message and comparing them to others. And turning that inwards and think, how can I learn from this? How can I connect to myself? How can I love and be of service? And how can I let go of others and my reaction to create and cultivate inner peace within me? Does that make sense? I hope this helps you. Because one thing that I really noticed when I was reading all my self-development books and taking courses and certifications is that they don't necessarily teach you how all of this like millionaire mindset stuff actually applies to business, applies to your life. And I really found it difficult as a woman, how do I inject femininity? How do I inject my self-development, my spirituality into business, into my life? so that everything is one and I'm just working as this whole person and I don't have, you know, different hats. This is how I'm at. This is how I am at the office. This is how I am with my friends. This is how I am when I'm in yoga class and in a meditation. So how can we actually live these principles so that you can be more love and share more love in the world? I hope this helps you. I have another uh, question that just came in. I feel like I've been so focused on work and career that I lose the ability to find something for me. A hundred percent. I love that. Thanks for sharing. And that's why I actually started. I'm not sure if you saw, but I started with a quick tip for Mindset Wednesday. And that is how can you connect to yourself today? How can you give yourself more space, more stillness, more time? I know for myself, I literally need like complete alone time every day, whether it's sitting outside or having my tea and I actually need physical space. So my boyfriend and I live together. I can't be in the same space with him. This is his office. We're trying to figure out where to uh, to move things. 
and I usually work here at the island. I need to go upstairs in my bedroom or go outside or go for a walk and make sure I give myself space every day. Your space from your work, your career, your loved ones is so important for you to connect to self and your connection to self is critical for your foundation, for you to connect to what's right for you and to share the message that you have to share. Because I know you have to share something in a unique way that nobody else can do. And even if you just help one person, as humans, we I believe we are here to help and be of service and love one another. So how can we do that? Whether it's just in your family, and it's not just just, but whether it's your family, it's one person, two people, 100 people, 100,000 people. It doesn't matter. You are still a leader. You still have something to say and something to stand for. So what do you stand for from a loving, kind, generous, accepting place? And I add that because so often I think people, especially now, when we live in this like justice world where people are trying to stand for something it doesn't always come from a loving kind accepting place it comes from a judgment and hate place it's coming from people's insecurities and fears so when you ask yourself what do i stand for open your chest open your heart love and connect to the truth of who you are and having routines, our very first training when I did these lives was all about routines and finding your alignment. I talk about alignment all the time because it's so important for you to find your alignment, to know that your message is coming from truth, to know that you're not getting in your own way and you're not getting all wrapped up in ego. You have to create routines to always be connecting to yourself every day so that you know you're happier you're more confident and you can stay on your path a little bit easier and a little bit faster. Okay, cool. Any other questions or comments? I so appreciate you ladies being here this morning. Erica, Elisa, Stephanie, and all of you ladies watching, thank you for being here. If you take anything from today, it's to connect with self and recognize that all of your reactions, opinions, and judgments are about you and not other people. Just as other people's actions, reactions, and judgments are not about you, it's about them. And so I'll leave you with one visual as I finish up this little training. It's as if all of us humans are walking around, and I believe within us, we have our fears and insecurities, and our truth, our loving, most amazing, beautiful self. And we get to choose who shows up in every reaction and every interaction. Most people by default are showing up with their fears, their insecurities. And we got fears and insecurities against fears and insecurities, trouble. But as soon as you change the game, and if other people are unconsciously bringing their fears and insecurities to an interaction, and you consciously bring love and peace and acceptance, it changes the game. You can't have the same conflict. So just pay attention to what are your fears and insecurities? Are you showing up with your fears and insecurities or your truth? Because that's where it starts. And in everything that I talk about, and even within TLC, we changed our tagline because the TLC tagline is we connect others with themselves first and then others. Because that connection to self is critical to make sure that you have better relationships a better career, and you feel better about yourself because you show up so different. Hey, Michelle, thank you so much. She says, so true. This is so valuable. Thank you for sharing. I really hope this helps you. I'm sharing with you so much love because I see so, I feel emotional right now because I see so many beautiful women in this community. And I know that you have so much in you. And I know that you can make such a difference. And I believe in you and I don't want you to live in fear. I want you to connect to the truth of who you are so that you can help others so that we can all connect and bond together. So if you need anything, please let me know. Send me a DM. Let me know how I can help and support you. 
And I'm just here cheering you on. I really believe in abundance and that everyone can have love and happiness and success and whatever that means to you because success means different things to different people. I love you so much. Go out there, be you, do you, and go out there and change the world. I love you.